ladies and gentlemen. I'm new here. I'm new here in uh, Bay Area, and I'm new here in the Maxt. Well, uh, so <clears throat> I would like just to show you what I am doing. Uh, I am working in video compression for almost 30 years, and I can recall how MPEG-1 standard uh, emerged. Well, so I am, say, old style uh, software developer in video compression industry. Well, and since that time, since the time when I start this, I always think about uh, what is the, uh, how, uh, how to compare internal camera noise with the uh, artifacts which we got from video compression. A lot of people talk about that we, we need lossy compression or we need lossless compression. And I just think how to compare it. Uh, uh, why we need, how to compare uh, internal camera noise with the lossy artifacts. So what I, I've done, I've done this simple thing. I make a video of a still picture. That is 243 frames of a still picture. If I will play it, it, you will see nothing. It's just still picture. If we a bit uh, increase resolution, so you may see that pixels are different. Each box here is one pixels there. So pixels are a bit different. Well, this is, this is internal camera noise. I, 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 take, I took a very good camera, not that good, but <laughs> but not that bad. It, it, it is a Blackmagic 4K camera. Uh, well, and, uh, and more or less good uh, 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 lens system. I, I cannot recall what is this, but I may say it costs 12K. So not that bad. Uh, and uh, uh, you may see that, um, say, illumination is also not that bad. Well, so then I analyzed pixels in this video. Uh, this, uh, uh, there you can see six different pixels. So I cal calculate all the pixels for all 243 uh, frames. So this is uh, 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 luminance of a pixel, and uh, this is distribution. You may see that more or less for each luminance distribution looks like Gauss distribution. This means that if we calculate an average between all those pixels, we will get the real value without internal camera noise. So I've done this calculation. Let me show you. This is clean. OK. This is clean. OK. And actually, as you can see, it is absolutely the same frames here. What's the next? The next, I calculate the PSNR value between this clean video and noisy video. And actually, this is the way how to estimate the real uh, noise of a camera. It's in this resolution, you do not see any difference. But if I see, show here, you may see. On the right, we s you see original. On the left, you see the clean picture. And here, at the bottom, you may see PSNR value. Uh, OK, 46. OK, this is the PSNR value between clean and original. And strangely enough, I see that average PSNR for this camera is around 44 dB. And actually, for those who do not know what is uh, dB about, I may say this is a very big difference. Usually for good uh, near to lossy compression, they say 52, 55, 56 
So Apple ProRes at highest quality provides something around 56 dB. And this means that it's uh, nobody, nobody needed because actual camera noise is about 44 dB. Well, okay, so what I do then, I try to compress original video and compare compression artifacts with internal camera noise. So here we may, let me find it one by one. Okay, QP12. Okay, so here on the left you see clean image, on the right encoded image, and here uh, original, not compressed. Again, in this resolution there is no difference, but if we will see it this way, this is the... Uh, actually, again, at QP12 there is no difference. I, I need to tell that I encode video in intra frames. There is no frame to frame prediction because if we will compress just prediction for still image, it's clear that any kind of compression will destroy all the image, uh, all the all the noise. So I do just i frame compression. So for QP12, uh, and this is HVC. We may see this three uh, lines. So orange line, this is the difference between uh, compressed original and original itself. And here two lines, uh, blue and green. Green line is the difference between clean and original, and blue line a difference between uh, clean and compressed. And you may see that's actually no difference. Okay, and if you increase compression, say 15, you may see here it's difference at about 0.4 dB. So green line, this is, how, uh, this is the qu quality of original image compared to clean image. And the blue line is the quality of compressed image compared to clean image. You may see here that quality of compressed image is better than original. <laughs> 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 and, uh, well, well, you are right. You are right. I'm cheating. Yeah, sure. <laughs> well, I am cheating. <laughs> This is, uh, that what I told is, uh, is true for this exactly image. So we, we have a lot of low frequencies here and not that much high frequencies. But anyway, there are high frequencies here and it's not completely simple image. I am sure that on more, uh, on, a, on a video with more details, I will have another results but it will be more or less close to it. So, uh, actually, I uh, do this calculation for different QP, and I may say that, so, again, this orange, this is the difference of compressed to original, and it's more or less high, and you may see that compressed to original is much higher than PSNR of original to clean. And uh, here, blue one, this is, again, uh, compressed to clean. So for a few more, so QP15, QP20. So actually, this is probably upper level of compression that we may use here. Again, blue line is much higher than green line, but uh, orange line, this is uh, artifacts that we got from video compression, are about the same as internal camera noise. So this is upper level which we can use 
to encode near to lost C video. And something around, so, and, and um, average PSNR is 1.3 higher than internal, uh, than internal camera noise. If you will go upper, this will, uh, it will go down. So for, for 24, okay, the difference here will be just 0 0.5. And uh, orange line goes down, so it's no way to use this. For near, oh, sorry, excuse me, for near to lossy compression. And for this video, with this exactly, with this uh, luminance and with this number of details, optimal level of compression is about QP18. What does it mean in terms of uh, sizes? I may show you. This original 700 megabytes. This is QP15, almost no changes, that is around 10 times compression. And QP18, this, which is optimal for this exactly camera, for this exactly number of uh, details, and for this luminance, that's effective compression roughly 15 times. Again, uh, this video at this compression level has better quality than original. It's more close to clean picture than original to clean picture. Well, <coughs> okay, and uh, just last thing that I'd like to show you. Uh, I also calculate uh, the pure noise just to show you how pure noise looks like. What I've done here, I... Uh, I take noisy picture, I take clean picture, and just subtract it and multiply by 10 that it could be better visible. So uh, you may see, you may easily see that the dark places are, has, a, a, has a different noise compared to light places. And here, Okay, this one is good. So here I think so, I'm not 100% sure, but I think so that here we have a just uh, uh, temperature noise. So when camera, the, there is a, some temperature of a camera and electrons goes from, uh, uh, from potential, Oh, I have no enough English words, sorry. Uh, <laughs> well, <laughs> actually I'm trying to explain you physics, but I never explain physics in English. I usually, <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. Uh, I have physics background, uh, yeah, I am master in physics. But when I study physics and when I talk about physics, I live in Russia. And here I'm mainly talking about video compression, so I can easily <laughs> tell you about YUV, RGB, whatever else, but about potential, potential what? Potential? Well, Yama. Well, oh, so, sorry, it's in Russian. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, um, well, so here we see mainly this, uh, uh, this temperature noise. And here probably, I think so, we see the noise of uh, camera amplifier. And it's bigger, and it may run on a few pixels. And, and one more interesting thing that I found on those pictures just today, when I was prepared to this lecture, say, when we see, when we run this, we see some emboss effect. And here you may see some emboss effect. At the beginning, it looks like upper uh, boundary is black and lower boundary is light at the beginning of the video. And closer to the end of video, it is opposite. 
somehow. Upper boundary is light and lower boundary is black. So I thought about probably, I don't know, half an hour, 40 minutes. So only one e explanation that I found today that actually my camera was not 100% stable. During those 10 seconds, it goes down slightly, very slightly. We may see that this uh, boundary, it's not, not yes, uh, I, yes, it's actually, it goes, go, ah, it's not goes down, it goes up. Not that much, uh, approximately, probably, one eighth of a pixel, but this is, <laughs> <laughs> but this is well, well, uh, I did not calculate clearly how much it affect my results. Uh, probably not that much. <laughs> well, but I am sorry I found this. Okay, so thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, actually scaling down help you to de decrease the noise. Because if you have Gaussian noise, if you, uh, if you combine four pixels together, this means that you will decrease noise about four times. Well, uh, yes and no. Uh, well, uh, if we are talking about just the uh, temperature noise, it is not specially correlated at all. But if you are talking about noise, which we are we, do, we got from uh, in the noise video, yeah, I could see the structure of that picture. Well, ah, well, uh, and uh, well, let me explain why. Do you see there is different structure of a noise for for different luminance. So where we have uh, le less luma, we have another type of noise. So actually. What I may say, well, I am not 100% sure, but it looks like that here on the dark places, the noise is structured. And here on the lighter locations, noise is unstructured. So, In fact, I, I think I want to make a bigger point. I think this noise is spatially structured, and I also think it was temporally structured. That is to say, uh, there were periods when it was blacker and then periods when it was whiter in the noise. And so like, I think that this could have all kinds of interaction with both spatial and time domain compression, if, if you actually. OK. Well, it's, it's interesting. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm going to work with this. Actually, this is my personal project. I just, I just play with this. Well, and uh, I will follow study of all this behavior. And uh, I will be very interested if somebody may provide me data from another cameras especially if it will be a very high quality, studio quality cameras. Well, there is no answer on this question, unfortunately. I am working in this domain for 30 years, and I never see the perfect noise reduction system. Uh, say, uh, the best of the best they have a lot of a lot of uh, a lot of rulers a lot of parameters that you can change and make it work fine for this exactly video but it's again not automated and uh, i hope that some sort of neural networks mechanisms may help us to distinguish noise from from original picture but it's not solved yet. Yeah, I, I use three channels, YUV, that is Luma and two chroma components. Here you see pure Y channel, and we, I may show that is U channel, this is V channel. And we may see all the channels all together, but it's, yeah, I'm sorry, here U and V components are <laughs> up and down, so that is why I showed just why? Just Luma. <laughs>